Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to our channel for learning one question a day. The question that we are going to do is tooth morphology and the tooth that we are going to discuss is the maxillary canine, very important tooth functionally as well as from exam point of view. The introduction brief, four canines, two in each jaw and one in each quadrant. They are used for seizing, digging, slashing, piercing, fighting and tearing, most important. And because uh, they are the, one of the longest tooth in the arch, they have the longest root, the stablest tooth in the arch. Okay, they are often the last tooth to be extracted or to be affected by caries because of their smooth nature. And the long root, they are often the last tooth to be extracted. Very strong tooth called as the cornerstone of the arch because it is the one place where the entire arch turns entire maxillary or mandibular arch turns from upper that is or a transition from anterior to posterior it is the place where the arch moves or creates the u-shape it is situated at the corners of the mouth so it's called the corners of the mouth also it is initially given maxillary canine is under the universal system is named as six tooth number six or eleven palmar rotation fdi notation one three or two three the first evidence of calcification is seen about four to five months after birth. Enamel completion takes up to six to seven years. Eruption happens in 11 to 12 years and root completion may take another two to three years. That is at the age of about 13 to 15 years. And going to the dimension, the cervical incisor length is about 10 mm and the length of root is about 17 mm. This is how this is to be the longest tooth. Okay. At the incisor ledge, the cervic mesiodistal diameter is 7.5 and 5.5. It is, whereas the labiopalatal diameter is about 8 mm at its broadest end and at the cervical thin. It is labiopalatally more bigger than mesiodistally. And going into the individual aspect, the buccal or the labial aspect. Okay. Two sloping sides. We have got a single prominent cusp. Two sloping sides which meet approximately at midline of the tooth. Okay, which meet at the midline of the tooth. If you ride a bisector, root tip and the cusp tape approximately is at the center. And the, uh, we have two margins forming one cusp. This is the first tooth that has a prominent cusp. We'll go into the details thing. Okay. We have a deeply placed cervical line with the convexity facing the root and concavity facing the crown. From the cervical line along the mesial outline, first it forms a slight concave surface till the, it reaches the contact area. Where is the contact area in the mesial side? The contact area is at the incisal third or junction of the incisal and occlusal third after which it forms a slight concavity to form what we call it as the short mesial slope. So the deeply placed cervical line with the convexity facing towards the root tip, then forms a slight concavity to meet the uh, contact area. The contact area is at the mid midline of somewhere at the occlus uh, incisal and the middle third meeting point, then has a slight concavity forming the short mesial slope, then forms the long distal slope after the cusp tip and has a slight convexity in the, con in the contact area, then after has a concavity. So how does this work out? Cervical line, mesial outline concave, then slight concavity forming the short mesial slope, then long distal slope, slight convexity, then concavity to join the, this is the distal outline. So mesial outline, distal outline. And the entire buccal surface is made up of a prominent labial ridge, prominent labial ridge causing two developmental depressions on either side. And that will be the mesial and distal, prominent cervical, uh, prominent cervical ridge or labial ridge. Okay. So cervical line, I will again go cervical line, mesial sign, concavity first, then slight concavity, short mesial slope, long distal slope, slight convexity, concave. 
then we have a prominent labial ridge either side of which we have developmental depressions the root is long and slender the uniform taper and the mesial outline is straight and at the end we have a distal tilt and the most important point is the mesio incisal angle the mesio incisal angle is more coronally situated than the disto incisal angle so and the palatal or the lingual aspect similar to labial but narrower than mesial marginal and distal marginal it's are prominent we have a prominent cingulum in the cervical third with grooves we'll go again from the palatal aspect we have again mesial distal surface seen we have a deeply placed cervically line and along the mesial lower the same concept of initial concave slight concavity short mesial slope is there but the marginal ridges are very prominently seen the mesial marginal lines and the distal marginal ridges they unite by a short mesial slope and a long distal slope and they encompass a what we call it as lingual fossa here we have a very prominent lingual ridge that runs by the union it is formed by the union of the mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge and runs nearly to the entire length of the root and divides the lingual fossa into a mesial lingual fossa and a distal lingual fossa the cingulum is much more prominent we may see lingual pit or grooves also the uh, root is uniformly tapering with a slight distal tilt then we have the mesial aspect mesial aspect has a greater labio palatal diameter of all tooth wedge shaped and shows much pronounced concavity along the cingulum area and incisal third is the contact area so from the buccal outline it is uniformly convex after which in the palatal surface it forms a s shaped initially from the cusp tip it is convex then forms a concave then a convex so convex 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 concave convex that is s shaped the cervical line is convexity facing the incisal level reversal deeply placed the root is uniformly tapering nice neat slender distal very similar to that of the mesial aspect but this cervical curvature is slightly less and distal marginal ridge is heavier that's it and pronounced developmental depression is seen that are the only features that differentiates otherwise it is a replica the occlusal aspect is seen as a prominent cusp okay have made up by the mesial and distal cuspal ridge the cusp is 90 degree to the long axis of the tooth and formed by the labial and lingual ridges of the of the mesial and distal cusp ridges there are five ridges and three fossas so lingual ridge mesial cuspal ridge mesial marginal ridge mesial lingual ridge distal lingual ridge distal marginal ridge distal cuspal ridge the lingual fossa is segregated into oh, mesial fossa distal fossa combining for the lingual fossa if there is a uh, improper lingual ridge if the lingual ridge is very prominent it divides into two fossa mesial and distal and we have four palpons three on the buccal mesio buccal disto buccal and middle and we have one lingual and the lingual is one or the palatal is one that forms the cusp of this uh, cingulum it is directed towards the cingulum situated more buccally embrasures contact point also has to be mentioned because we have discussed that and with that we end the discussion on maxillary canine a very important question for exam practice and learn incrementally at least one question a day till we meet again happy learning